Sulak, and I am going to introduce George and tell you a little bit about him. George will be conducting the workshop with me tonight, and we're so glad to have him with us. He is a networking colleague of Cindy Bryant, who is one of our HR faculty, and um, he is driven from Franklin to be with us this evening. So a little bit about George before we get started about networking. Um, he's a sales and marketing professional and in promotional products and apparel. He has over 15 years of experience in researching, developing, implementing advertising campaigns and using promotional products as a means to reinforce branding. Um, he launched his own company successfully, Promotions by George, and he's celebrating five years in business. Um, George is originally from Chicago and he, is a, he and his wife live in Franklin. Um, in his spare time, which I can't imagine that he has much, he um, enjoys playing softball, golf, and trying new recipes as he grows out. Um, as I said, George is a, a colleague of Cindy Bryant, our faculty, and she asked him as one of her networking colleagues to be with us this evening. So I will be um, doing the workshop for you, but George has many, many things to share because networking is a great part of his business, so he will be reinforcing many things. So thank you for being with us, George. Um, I want to thank Delta Mu Delta and um, the Sherm Group here at Athens for being our co-sponsors tonight and um, for providing pizza and um, for supporting this event. And so I want to thank Professor Roberts and um, Professor Bryant for, um, for supporting us as well. And I also want to thank you for being here because you are taking a big step in your development by coming to a networking workshop. Um, a lot of people know that networking is important, but they haven't taken the time to be here or to work on their networking effectiveness. And networking is not always easy for everyone, so you should be congratulated and pat yourself on the back for taking the time to be here tonight and making yourself more effective in your growth and development so you can be successful in the work world and in finding that job that you want and for starting to build your networking connections and knowing how important that is now and how important that will be for the rest of your life. So thank you for being here. So let me just kind of go back and tell you why we're talking about networking. Um, in having, each year we do a networking reception and we, we choose one degree area or two degree areas to focus on. And we've done two of those already. Um, two years ago it was accounting, and last year it was um, contracting and logistics. And we do receptions so that we can give you an opportunity to network. And it also gives you an opportunity to meet employers. And it gives, gives employers an opportunity to create visibility for their companies and also to network with you and get to know you. This year we're doing HR and management, and some of you know that already. Um, but we've noticed over the past two years that networking is something at events that our students are not comfortable with. And so in an effort to improve those skills and make you more comfortable, we thought, well, well, this year before we do that, we'll make this workshop available to everyone. But we also are trying to help you so you can be successful at any networking event that's coming up. So what is networking and why is it important? Does anyone want to take a stab? Is it hard? Yes. Well, let me go over there. Before I do that, let, this is the agenda of things that we're going to talk about tonight. And the first one is what is networking and why is it important? And then the types of networking, professional introductions, dress, uh, refreshments, how to handle those at networking events, um, event goals and the setting up event goals, and then also um, approaching people and talking and conquering your nerves, and then the value of your contacts, and then probably last of all, what do you do after the event, because that's very, very important. Forgive me, I forgot to go over the agenda with you. So let's talk about, let's talk about networking. It's scary. Is it scary to any of you? It is. Yeah. It's scary. And sometimes that's why people don't do it, because it's scary and they don't really understand what it is. Um, many, many people think that it's 
it's kind of an opportunity where you go to an event and what you're trying to do is just sell yourself. Talk to people about what you're wanting. You know, I want, I need a job. Tell me if you can help me with getting that job. And it's all about what they can do for you and it's all about how you're telling them about yourself. But that's not really what it is. I mean, networking is a two-way street. It's all about building relationships with people um, and all about um, what you can do for them and what they can do for you. And it's not something that's just about getting a job. It's about connecting with that person. So whether it's sharing information, whether it's helping them connect with another person, you do that ongoing. It's not something that you just do for a short period of time. There's a, a mantra I like to share with you that I, that I kind of partake in in all my networking activities, and that's it's a two-word mantra. It's givers gain. If you're willing to, if you're willing to give to your to your, the person you're networking with, then more than likely the person you're talking to will want to give back. So if you're, if you're volunteering to give, you can expect at some point in time to receive. So if you practice a givers gain philosophy, that that's that's rule number one, if you will. Really, it's a, when you say build relationships, it's building relationships with people that some, you have something mutual in common and that you can share with each other. That's like building alliances. But it's also who you know, who they know, and the inclination of those who know each other to do things for each other. How many, how, how many are familiar with the six degrees of Kevin Bacon? No? Part of it. You know, Kevin Bacon, you know, all, all the actors are in the movies, or someone's done a movie with Kevin Bacon. It's, it's the same way in, in business as well. Someone you may know here may know someone that's hiring, so, and that's two degrees away, whereas Kevin Bacon's always six degrees away. But uh, the point is, if you're, if you're, you can connect with someone, they, they too might know someone else that could be a possible resource for you. So it's all, it's all degrees and extended out for you. It's sort of like um, George being here tonight. I mean, the reason he's here tonight is that he has a colleague, Cindy Bryant, who's one of our faculty, and of course this isn't about searching for a job, but when she needed someone to help her out, because she couldn't be here tonight, he was a colleague, mm -hmm. and they have that connection in place, so she was able to reach out to him and say, can you be here tonight? So that's, that's kind of how networking works, mm -hmm. and that's I'm sure yeah. that George can tell you of a time maybe when he's had to ask Cindy to help him. Cindy, as a matter of fact, is is a resource for me as, as a speaker herself. She gives presentations from marketing to millennials to HR topics, and I've engaged her in many a time to speak to my clients and friends on, on various topics. So I'm, she's always a quick call away to, to engage her for, for speaking opportunities, for, for one example. So we, we, we're kind of reciprocating one way or the other going forward almost, almost regularly. I think we're spending a little bit of time on this part because I think it's important that you understand that networking is a two-way street. It's not about what someone can always do for you. It's about what you can do for each other. And it's not just today, but it could be over the span of your life or it could be over a long period of time. And it's not always about what they can do to help you get a job, even though Sometimes that's when we reach out to our network, um, but it can be in lots of different situations, like George and Cindy, or like, you know, right now, I'm looking for someone to help do a workshop for another part of the university on customer service. And I have some colleagues out there that I know, if they can't do it, they may can recommend someone that can do it. And so that's my connections that I'm reaching out to. And those are the kinds of things that happen with your network. Just some other examples besides the fact that your network helps you with getting, sometimes helping you, helping you get your job. Yeah, I have an example too that I can share. Yeah. On a, on a non-professional level, I have a, a cat that has been converting from an inside, outside, cat, outside cat to an inside cat. He's not doing very well. And as a result, he's rebelled and revolted and he's scratched all of our furniture to bits. And I've engaged my network in asking them if they know of a local upholsterer to help me fix our, our couch and sofa because of our cat doing this scratching thing. So that's reaching out to only be a professional level, but also be on a personal level. So this, if, you, if you keep our radar going both on, on those facets, you're, you're just you're networking the right way. Basically. And so sometimes you sometimes you divide 
who are, who's part of your network, network into three different categories. And I think it's good for you to think of people this way. Um, you can have your personal network, and your personal network might be your family, um, your close friends. Um, it might be a mentor, too. That might go under personal. Um, under pro-personal, those would be people like um, maybe your advisors here at Athens, maybe your professors. Um, anyone that maybe you have a personal relationship with, but maybe they're a professional. Um, then that last group, your professional connections, those are going to be people like recruiters. Those are going to be people like employers, maybe that you meet at different events. Those are the professional people out there. Sometimes under that pro-personal, you'll think about also uh, maybe people that are involved in a club with you. They're kind of professional, but they're kind of close and friendly with you too, so that is not the other personal. But I think it's very helpful if you're trying to grow your network of connections that you maybe make a chart and list those people. And think about, you know, where do I have a long list? Where do I have a short list? How, do, how can I grow that list? And what can I do to make that list longer? Because you really need people in every one of those, every one of those networks. So, wow, when I went out there to really pull some data for you, because I'd like to have some data for you to know, that 65 to 80% of all jobs are found through networking. That, somewhere between 65 and really 90, because I saw numbers that were all over the place, but it was never any lower than 65. Sometimes it was 75, sometimes it was 80, and then a couple of places said 90% of jobs. But that many of jobs are found through networking. That's huge. So to be highly effective in your job search, you need to address this networking piece. I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for my connections in networking. And I was a passive candidate. I'll share this little story. I was a passive candidate, which means I wasn't really looking. Um, but someone that was a connection, a friend of mine, said, hey, there's this job out there at Athens, and you might think about it. They actually thought I'd be good for it. <laughs> um, and they said, you might look at it. I would have <coughs> never, ever looked. So I was kind of happy where I was. And, but then I saw it, and I thought, you know, I could do that. And I applied for it. And then someone else here knew me. And so when I was one of the candidates, they must have given me a reference, right? So, I mean, that's just an example that sometimes it's not that you're even looking for a job, but someone may tell you about something. But then someone may know you, and then they provide that reference that maybe you didn't even know was out there for you, but they knew you. And somebody said, hey, you know this person. They have applied for a job. I had a student call me yesterday and say, hey, I got that job. And she was calling to thank us, and she said, they said they got two references on me. And I said, well, I know where one of them came from. It came from us. But I have no idea where the other one came from. So you just never know when those people that are your connections and those people that are in your network may can help you that way, too. It's just an example. Okay. So, so 65 to 80. I'm just going to mention, you were talking about the three yeah. groups there. Sometimes people may cross those groups. Um, for example, if you work with somebody professionally and then you change jobs, they may still remain your personal um, connection and they may um, be very valuable to you even after you leave that job. So you don't want to burn bridges because that person will remain a good network connection. Absolutely. That is just a, that's a great point. Um, I can recall um, situations where you may have to go back and have a reference on your past work experience, and they may have you have to write a letter. Well, you want to make sure you kept those connections at your previous employment from those bridges, so that maybe if you need a letter for that period of time, someone there will write it for you. But that's a very good point. Yeah, I mean, I have connections that go back to 25, 30 years ago. I mean, long like that. And I don't just call them when I need them. I connect with them at Christmas. I mean, we're so lucky now that we have so many other ways we can connect with people on um, social media. But, you know, don't just reach out to them when you need them. 
send them a nice hello, send them a nice card, think about Christmas, send them a Christmas card, something. Reach out to them all the time so you keep that connection, um, doing things for them. It's not just what they can do for you, it's what you can do for them too. That's a great thing. So, I think it's important that even while you're here at Athens that you understand that there are things that you can be doing to network and um, to grow and develop um, while you're here at Athens and to, to network in your organizations as some of you are already doing and have and, and I wanted you to see where you could take that. And so I asked um, Rebecca DeBaugh to be with us tonight. Um, Rebecca is a 2014 graduate, um, double major in HR and management. And um, I knew Rebecca when she was here, and I knew all of the great things she did. So I asked her if she'd come share with you tonight what she did while she was here to help herself in a networking sort of way. <laughs> I'm going to sit somewhere. Okay. So as she said, my name is Rebecca Duval. A little bit about myself. I'm working at the National Packaging Company as a training coordinator. I have been with this company for two years now. Um, I graduated from Athens in May of 2014. Um, while attending Athens State, I was involved in both SGA and the Student Sherm chapter here at Athens State for two years. Um, with being involved in the Student Sherm, it is so important as you begin your career or while you're in your career now. Um, since I've been a part of the student term, I have met and stayed in contact with many HR professionals. Um, HR professionals want to help you in any way that they can, just like Sarah Lynn mentioned. Um, in 2013, I won a scholarship through the Sherm chapter to go on the Capitol Hill visit. Um, this was around 15 HR professionals that I was um, with as well, so I was networking while on the Capitol Hill visit. Um, with going on the Capitol Hill visit, um, I was able to get the job that I have now. Um, the director that I'm under now, her name is Pam Marsler. She was on the Capitol Hill visit. So with networking with her, eventually about a couple months afterwards, she asked me if I was um, available for the HR clerk position there at National Packaging. And through that, uh, in June in 2015, um, I was, or February 2014 is when I started that position. And then I was still attending Athens, and then once I graduated, I ended up getting the HR General's position there at National Packaging. And then since then, now in September of 2015, I got the training coordinator position. Um, initially, just being involved in the student term, because I kept initially why I was involved is just our HR manager and uh, <coughs> Fever, which was uh, the student chair president at the time just kept telling us you need to be involved, you need to join, you need to join the student chair, you need to be go to all these conferences, you need to come to these networking meetings just to meet other people and get involved. And um, I didn't really realize how important it was until I got into my career. As students, you don't think how important it is, but it really is. Um, through this um, student chair, I've had three different speaking engagements which now with my job, it has really helped me because I do onboarding. I, you know, just Monday I had to speak in front of 16 and train 16 people and I had to train them. And before I would never want to get up in front of everybody and speak. And still to this day, you know, it helps me with my career to come to events like this to get up and speak and get the courage because not everybody is meant to, you know, come up and speak to everybody. Um, Let's see, with being involved with the student SHRM, once I graduated from Athens State, I knew I needed to stay involved in SHRM. Um, I haven't been a member of the TBC SHRM locally in Decatur for two years now, and I go to meetings every month and stay connected with all those HR professionals as well. Um, with networking with all these HR professionals has really impacted my career. When I needed, to, when I needed help with a question or situation, whether it was about FMLA or other, other things about implementing policies or anything in that field. Um, I have a close enough relationship with other HR professionals that I can ask for their advice and experience. So it is vice versa. Just like Sarah Lynn asking me to come to this and speak, I can do this for her, but I know she will be able to help me in the long run as well in different areas. So it's just nice to keep these relationships and help each other out. Um, which I said, HR is not easy and it's so relieving to know that I'm connected with many HR professionals that are willing to help me when I need it. And that would be my biggest advice 
for y'all is just to keep coming to events like this even when you don't want to and push yourself because it is mandatory I feel like in this career you know outside of this world because it's so competitive anyways and it's you need to get your name out there so that's just a little bit about myself but and the networking so mm -hmm. <laughs> The Alumni Association, we okay. Rebecca to have that. We love it when alumni come back and, and speak and are part of our events. Um, so thank you. Can I make one more quick comment? Yes. Rebecca mentioned that she was not a big fan of speaking in public. Yes. yes. And so kudos for doing that today. Yes. But yes. for all of you who are interested in becoming more comfortable in speaking in public, there's an organization called Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. And there's various chapters around, probably around this area, all across the country. And they help you put over your fear of public speaking by making you actually give a speech. You, you, you do a prepared speech or off the cuff speech, stuff like that. But if you're looking to be more confident in public speaking, you know, I recommend you doing that. If you Google it, you'll probably find a local chat. Thank you, Rebecca. You're welcome. I think one of the main things she pointed out was that our networking started here at school, but it transferred to um, the SHRP group that she's involved in now. And also, it continues. And she still works with um, staying with her connections that she made even while she was here at Athens. And so that's one of those longevity things that you need to remember. It starts here. Um, you are so fortunate because you can network in person, but you can also network um, online um, in a virtual way. And that is equally as important. So remember that face-to-face -face networking is important, but you also want to be networking online. And the number one way, I think, to network online professionally is on LinkedIn. So guess what that means? You need a LinkedIn profile, right? <laughs> so you need to do that. And as you know, we really try to support that here, and we want you all to have LinkedIn profiles. But LinkedIn profiles are one of the ways that you can stay connected and do the same things. I mean, you can interact with your connections there, you can support them, you can share things with them. They can reach out to you in a very quick way on LinkedIn. And what you'll find at most events that you attend, people will be connecting immediately on LinkedIn with you if they meet you at an event. You know, I met George by email and phone last week, but we're already connected on LinkedIn, <laughs> right? And I mean, it's just so important. So you have both ways to connect. Um, One quick thought on LinkedIn, if, you, if you're connecting with someone there you, you don't really know, I would engage, yes engage on LinkedIn, but I also recommend doing a face, I think that um, Carolyn mentioned a face to face as well. So I would highly recommend, yes network on LinkedIn, engage that way, but also take it offline from time to time. Grab a cup of coffee or grab some lunch or breakfast and meet with your person face to face on a regular basis. That was kind of a way to keep it more personal that way as opposed to Yes. In personal with a virtual connection, but do more face to face on a regular basis when you can. And so, you know, you think about okay, networking. You know, what kind of events? Where do I where do I go to network? Sometimes networking just happens over lunch. I mean, you may be having lunch with, you know, some friends that are in Sherm with you, or some friends that are in um, Delta Mu Delta with you, or you may it may even just be a group of friends from your classes here. But any time that you're having lunch with them, you may be building connections. You may sit down with your professor and talk with them about your, your plan of study. And that could almost be a networking. If you're sharing and you're talking about your goals and your career and what you want to do, that could be networking because you're building a relationship with your professor. You know, a lot of times our students don't know their professors very well because they're distance. They only take online classes. And we always encourage you to come and meet with them because the better they know you, the more they get to know about you and see you and talk to you, the better they can support you. And you know, they're part of your network. You want them to be part of your network. So sometimes just a lunch can be a networking event. You know, I had the dean of the College of Business ask me to go to lunch with her just so that we could get to know each other better. And two days before she said, I want us to go to lunch, but I have another person that I'd like for you to meet. And she said, do you care if I asked her? And I said, no. She said, well, she's an employer. And I said, by all means, have her come so I can meet her. I had lunch with them. That was a connection for me. 
And since then, she has contacted me about coming down and speaking at her company so that we can talk about job opportunities for our students there. So I mean, that was just lunch, and that was just the last minute thing. So any person that you are meeting or connecting with over lunch or dinner, they can be a connection for you. The other places that you might um, do networking certainly would be at a career fair. You know, a career fair is a big networking event because why are you going there? Typically you're going there to meet with recruiters, you're going there to talk to them about jobs. And so that definitely is a networking event. Um, what I want to say about career fairs is that I want you to go to a career fair with a plan to meet certain employers because you kind of know who you need to talk to. But I also don't want you to discount anyone that you meet there because you never know, you may not have gone there to talk to Regions Bank, but maybe you happen to meet the recruiter from Regions Bank. That person may somewhere along the line say, you know, you make a really great person at the career fair at Athens State. And they may help you because they connect you to someone else. So don't ever discount anyone at a career fair. But a career fair is a major network. Um, employer information sessions. You know, from time to time, we have employers on campus to do information sessions. And they come and they talk about their companies and how to apply there. Those are great opportunities to network. Don't ever go to that and not talk to the person that did the presentation. That's an important part of that. Guest speakers, you know, anyone that we've had here as a guest speaker, and we have some in the room tonight, um, David McElhaney from Global Recruiters, Christina Minyard from Dynetics, have both been speakers. Any of those people that, that come and speak here, you need to connect with those people. You need to talk with them. Uh, professional organizations. You all should belong to professional organizations. That's a great place to build your network. Typically, if you're in a professional organization, sometimes you have the same goal as the people that are there. So, belong to professional organizations. A couple of organizations that I belong to, I mentioned Toastmasters, I'm very involved with that, great networking opportunity. Also, the local chamber of commerce will also be a great networking opportunity. You can get engaged with them as a member, serve on a committee or two, volunteer from time to time. Chamber of commerce will be also an excellent resource to tap into your networking members. I'm glad you said volunteer, and you know, any type of group where you volunteer, you never know who you're going to meet in those groups. That's a great way to build your network as well. And also, current or past employers, I think we mentioned the importance of keeping good relationships there. Those are those are strong ways to have to build your network. Yeah, don't yeah. don't burn bridges. You mentioned that before. <laughs> <laughs> and then anytime there's a reception or maybe there's a symposium and the reception is goes with the symposium. Um, I know there's some leadership things that we're attending here in the next couple of weeks, and sometimes those are open to anyone. Take advantage of those. And you're going to hear me say this tonight, you know, don't just go and show up. Go there and engage. And then that means don't go there for five minutes. Don't go there for ten minutes. Go there with a plan and go there and stay and talk to people. Set some goals. We're going to talk about setting goals. Networking. Okay, so professional introductions. Okay, professional introductions, I call it that, but it can also be called elevator speech, all right? This is where you have to prepare 30 second talk about yourself. How many of you have them? Oh, yay, great. Um, you wanna share it now? <laughs> no. um, they call it an elevator speech because you, in the event you should have to deliver it, you might deliver it while you're in an elevator ride with someone, and you don't want it to be any longer than 30 seconds, and you only want it to be about 80 words. I have that written down, I think, on your handout. And here's an example. And I mean, your elevator speech doesn't always have to be exactly the same speech because it might change a little bit depending on whether you're at a career fair or whether you're riding in the elevator with someone or whether you're at a networking reception. But in general, you want to share your name, you want to share your current role, you know, whether you're a student, what degree you're in, what major, and then what you bring or what you would have to offer. Those are really the three areas. Um, you kind of want to keep it and practice it so that you stay on topic. 
Okay, so you might say, I think I put an example on the handout, that you are, you know, Rebecca would have said, hello, my name is Rebecca DeBaugh. Um, I am currently employed at something National called packaging. Packaging. Say National, National, packaging. National Packaging Company, and I work as an HR specialist, and um, I graduated a couple of years ago from Athens State with an HR management degree. Depending on where she is, she might share that. Or she might say that, you know, I, my focus in HR currently is onboarding and working in compensation. You know, something like that. She would introduce herself, but she would want to say it, so she would say it pretty fast. Um, George. My only comment to that would be, is this be, be and you address it here in your slide, is this to be specific? You don't want to be vague and say anyone, anybody, anything. Just if you're more, the more specific you are, the more the person you're talking to your radar will remember you and, and has been focused look for for you. So this, I take away from that, just to be specific. You know, I introduce myself, I say, you know, hello, my name is Sarah Lynn Mitchell. I'm the Career Development Center Director at Athens State University, and I help our students prepare for the world of work. And many times they'll come back to me and say, so, so what are some of the things that you do? And I'll say, well, on a daily basis, we may be helping with resumes, we may be helping with interview preparation, but sometimes I just say we help them prepare for the world of work so that they come back with a question for me. So, but I try to keep it very focused and kind of short and to the point, but it gives them an idea of what I do. So you need to write one. Write it out, 30 seconds, and practice. Memorize. Memorize. So look, um, look at the handout. I'll put in a handout for you. Um, we gave you an example that you can just fill in. The one that the example is there, the one that says, um, I'm a student at Athens, that might be one that you would use at a career fair. That one might be one that if you were meeting people and you were at a reception and it was a mixed group of students and employers, you might use that one. I think you kind of tweak it depending on what the event is. But that would be one you could use and just fill in the blanks. So you write it out, you practice it, and practice it, and you make it conversational. It's not like you're just, hello, I'm so-and-so, and blah, 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 blah. You know, you want to say it so it's conversational. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, we put in a couple of other examples on there for you so that you would have something you could take away from tonight. Okay, so... Paint colors. So we mentioned earlier that um, when you go to an event, like a career fair, probably everyone goes with thinking, okay, I'd like to leave here with a job. Well, that's not typically what happens. Um, sometimes, I have known some people that went and got a job that day, but that's not typically what happens. So before you go to the event, you want to think about, okay, what do I want to accomplish? So if you're going to a career fair, you tell me, what would you feel so successful about at a career fair? Uh, referrals or being asked to come back for an inter uh, interview they want. Cool. So you met a recruiter and they talked with you and they said they would like you to come back. So one of your goals would be to be able to meet with maybe two or three recruiters and be asked to return later for an interview. Okay. That they were going to contact you later for an interview. Okay. That would be good. Uh, what would be another goal? Something kind of like that, then asking for your business card. That would be good. So you might go and you might want to ask for, be able to leave with two or three business cards. Better than have yours. Right. Either way. Either way would be right. That would be good. Um, what if it's a, what if it's a networking reception where your employers are there and other students are there? What are some goals you might set for that? Right. Learn something about someone. Right. Talk to X amount of people, learn something about people that are there or the employers that are there. So you might think about that, okay, if I, because you want to go with a plan, like I want to talk to X amount of people and I want to leave with this kind of information. Does that make sense? 
that's huge. I know that, that maybe that's not something that anyone's ever talked to you about, but setting you know, goals for the events that you go to is real important. You know, if, if it's a scary thing for you to go to a networking event, then just saying, I want to be able to talk to three or four different people um, and find out something about them, that could be huge for you. And that means they have your name. That means you have their name. So that could be building your network. So set event goals. It's ultimately, if you go to those career fairs, I want you all to have a job. <laughs> but sometimes that's not what happens there. So you've got to think about, what do I want to accomplish while I'm there? So you want to be able to deliver your, your um, 30 second professional introduction or your elevator speech and you want to leave a certain number of business cards or certain amount of information about the employers. Um, nothing to remember about the events, these events that that person may not hire you, but he may know someone else that he knows. It's networking. The, he knows your name. He has your card. He Absolutely. gives it to them and say, look, I can't use it, but I think this is the person you can use. I've known people do that. Sometimes I think it's important to go to events. You know, my students say to me, you know, I'm not ready to graduate yet, and so I'm probably not out there looking for a job yet, even though I think you should start looking early. Um, sometimes I want you to go to just practice. Practice doing your introduction. Practice finding out about companies and asking the questions. So, I mean, sometimes that's your goal. Think about that. Thank you. That was, that, that was very good. And you might want to connect with other, you know, other attendees as well. Because as he just said, you, you never, they may, even though they may not have anything themselves, themselves, they may know someone who else does. So, I would, I would connect with maybe two or three other people who are attending as well. That's true. I'm always looking for people who are in need of my service with my business and, uh, and we're always when we go to events we're looking to see what what you need and what we can make and how many people that we can find in that area that can, we can serve that's good yeah i mean when you have your own business i mean we're talking about you as individuals and networking for your growth development connections but certainly <coughs> if you have a business like you have and like george has definitely stay out there networking to build your contacts and connections for your business. Any questions about event goals? Just be sure to set those. Okay, so let's talk about dress. And, you know, one of the things that helps you be successful at different events is that you feel confident and good about yourself. And so that starts, first of all, with great grooming and knowing that you're dressed right. I mean, if you go to an event and you're not dressed appropriately, that can um, make a difference in how you feel about yourself and what you convey to others. And so, you know, we asked um, a couple of students to come tonight so we could kind of talk about dress. But, um, you know, I, I think that you have to dress, you know, I'm going to say this, that you have to dress that you feel comfortable. And sometimes that is different for every person. But I do think you have to think about the other people are, that are there and, the, and it's, it's important that you know that you may be a great candidate for a job, but their first impression of you is going to be what they see. And in our world today, you've got to kind of fit whatever they think you should fit for that look. And so remember that when you're dressing for different occasions. I think you know for interviews, <coughs> you know that you've got to dress in that professional dress, but I think you also should know for networking events that sometimes dressing appropriately is very important there as well. And so we have one other thing before we look at the dress that I want to talk about. Um, when you also go to an event, you usually have a name badge. So let's talk about that and then we'll talk about the dress. Um, and typically that name badge is something you fill out like tonight, right? Okay. So what did you put on it? Your name? Okay. If you're in a networking event, what else would you put on it? What you do? Yeah, tonight it wasn't necessary that you put it on there, but you might list your company name. You might, at a career fair, list your degree area. Um, so if it's if it's accounting, you would put accounting on there. You put HR. If it's HR, if it's management, and you also want to make sure it's very legible. <coughs> Um, 
you got to think about that. You know, you want that person. <laughs> You want that person to remember you. So many times it's fill out the name tag, and so you want to make sure that it's written so it's very legible, and you might put your degree area, or depending on the event, you might put your company name there, too. Okay. Uh, here's a tip for name badges. Looking around the room, I think most of us have it on the right side. You always want to put your name badge on the right side of your, well, my right side. Why? Because so yeah. I shake your hand, she sees my name badge right. on the right side. So you right. always want to put your name badge on the right side. Right. I have to think real hard about it. Most of the time, on a daily basis, I have it on the other side. But if you go to a networking event, and I thought about it tonight, that's why I put it over here. You want to, if, if we gave you, we normally don't do it, but we wanted you to have to write it, and we wanted you to have to think about it, put it on this side. When you shake someone's hand, they can see it. Just a little tip. So the dress, and we have business professional, and then we have business casual, and let's um, talk about business. Business casual is a difficult thing, right? What is business casual? Kara? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a couple of students volunteer to kind of come. Will you come? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, so they were all about this when we asked. Now they're like shy, right? Okay. This is Kara Gr Grigsby, and Kara is a management um, major, and she graduates May of this year. Yeah, for her. And um, Kara wore a nice blouse and slacks, and she would be great for business casual. Um, she was going to an event, and she knew the dress code was business casual, right? And what did we talk about? Sleeves. You said you were glad I wore long sleeves, and you didn't say why. Well, I just think that, um, I mean, I think business casual for, for ladies is typically a blouse and slacks, or it could be a skirt. But I think you always look, and it's because there's just many different generations out there, and if you wear sleeves, that's just a more acceptable, more professional type of looking thing than sleeveless. Even though I have to say, it's very trendy to be sleeveless today, in today's world. But I think sleeves make you look a little more polished, even in a business business casual um, And she wore flat shoes, which I think is fine. And she looks beautiful, right? Well groomed, and nice and neat, right? And so business casual, business casual for events, and business casual for um, you know the workplace too. Um, many times a workplace will be business casual. Okay. Thank you, Kara. Thank you, Beth. HR minor, and he also graduates in May of 2016. Like right? and um, tell us what we tell me tell, tell them what we talked about. What you should wear? Uh, khakis with a Oxford button down okay. and a belt that would match the shoes, obviously, and the professional shoes. And nice shoes could be loafers with nice shoes, but this would be a nice business casual look if you were going to a networking event or if you were, um, had a business casual day at work. Um, Dalton, thank you. You look very nice. Of course, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, so I posted something this week, and if you don't mind me letting, talking to you a little bit more. Of course. Dalton has um, facial hair, right? I don't want to embarrass you. Oh, that's fine. No, I'm, I'm proud of it. <laughs> I personally think it's fine. Um, Christina, you're in HR. What, do you, what does Diane think about facial hair? I don't have facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> so what does no, Diane think about facial hair? So, see, and, and that's actually the first thing on our um, interview appraisals that we write is appearance of the interviewee. Um, so if uh, if someone comes in with facial hair, we look for it to be like groomed, like freshly groomed, not kind of like um, scruffy or the shadow going on already. Yeah. And probably if it was like down to here, we would probably be like, yeah, I don't know about that. 
I don't mean to put you on the spot. I no, know. you're fine. You're, you're out there in the daily, in the in the real world right now. So right. I just wanted them to know. Yeah, I think the grooming part of it is the, the most important part. And I actually posted something this week that said clean shaven, and shame on me, I shouldn't have done that. Um, that's but probably. Sometimes you do prefer that. So yeah. You just have to kind of see how you think. Thompson Tractor, one of the companies that almost every member of my family lives works for, they they require everybody to clean shaven, except for a mustache, which makes everybody look creepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like some places would require it for safety reasons, like that can indicate or you have to have a clean shaven face so for the respirator is on you. Right. And so sometimes it depends on the work that you're doing or where you're working, but I hope you don't mind me bringing that up, but that is something that sometimes is a question. And so I thought I'd just make sure we cover that tonight. But thank you. Thank you about the business handling. So my business professional, Corey? Yeah, Corey. Corey is um, Delta Mu Delta provided the a professional look and Corey is I know accounting. Yes, ma'am. But tell me what I don't know when. I don't know when. Oh, December. December of this yeah, year. Yes, Just December of 2016. Um, and where did you tell me? You're going to work next week, right? Or uh well I have a job right now but I have a, a interview next week. Monday. Yeah, very good. So Corey um, is our business professional for um, our gentleman. And so, Corey, when you think about dressing business professional and thinking about your interview or a networking event, tell us about what you would normally think about. Uh, first off, I want to have nice shoes. Uh, they don't have to match. I'm wearing brown. But uh, just very nice. Maybe uh, dress shoes or Oxfords would be nice. And then with the pants, dress pants, uh, preferably black or, or gray. And then with the shirt, probably white or light blue. Uh, I would I would try to stay away from like the yellows or the purples, and uh, with the tie I would like to sit, stay with the uh, solid color, no SpongeBob or anything like that. <laughs> and, uh, maybe like a blazer or a sports coat. Be okay too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so yeah, you look sharp. You look Thank sharp. You. I'm glad you mentioned the shoes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all about the shoes. Right? <laughs> I'm all about the shoes. Your shoes are shiny too. Yeah, they, look, they are shiny. Very good. But yes, you look great. But a dark suit. Dark suit would definitely be. Good luck next week. Yeah. yeah. And brush you out. Stay on. Hi, so, Rochelle. You are going to a networking event, business professional, mm -hmm. and so you have some nice black slacks. Yep. Black pumps. I know you can't see them, but she has black pumps. And why are the pumps important? They just look very professional. They have a whole look to you. Right. And they are, <laughs> rather, than having, <laughs> rather than having an up and touch shoe, right? As much more professional. Yeah, you definitely want to do that. Dark blouse and um, simple jewelry. And did you think about maybe a, a jacket too? If I could have fit into my jacket, I'd be wearing it right now. <laughs> Sometimes you don't have a jacket, and so you want to wear a dark blouse and a professional looking blouse, which your blouse is very professional looking. But a, a jack, jacket would be an option, and that would make this more business professional for an interview. And um, but you look very nice in your dark slacks and your dark shoes. Anything else? No, Michelle. She has minimal makeup, which is good. No, I'm not a makeup girl. Yeah. <laughs> but neat. Very neat. Thank you, Michelle. You're very good. And Michelle, I did say management degree. Also graduating May of 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave, because I have something for you. Okay. Bring it tonight, okay? I'll leave. So just a little bit about dressing. The dressing right makes you feel um, more confident, okay? And really, when you're confident, you can do everything a whole lot better. Okay. Questions about dress? Yes. I worked as a corporate sales rep for Motorola for about five years, and I had tattoos. And that was really big with them. They, they looked at my tattoos and said, well, we don't know. But because of my te technical skills and knowledge, they still hired me. But I always had to wear long sleeves no matter what time of the year it was or where it was in the world. Not that they were, a, you know, an eyesore. I was in the Navy, just an eight. But it's something they, they worry about. Also, um, rings. Tongue rings, lip rings, eyebrow rings, nose septums. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. And we didn't talk about that because 
we're not seeing anyone here that I think has anything like that. I think you would know. The tattoos are a big thing now. I mean, I do encourage, I do encourage students and graduates to cover the tattoos if they're going for interviews. And I mean, companies usually have policies on whether it's an acceptable thing or not. Speak to that at all? Yeah, um, and I think really in, in anything that you do, including the tattoos, if it's visible, then it's something that catches my eye as your interviewer, and then that's how I remember you as the person who had a tattoo on their forearm or big dangly earrings or a bright yellow shirt instead of remembering the conversation that we had about your skills and stuff. So definitely, and, and I have tattoos, and I covered mine up for my interview at Dynetics, and you can go and get you some Kate Kat Von D cover-up. It works really well. But definitely, just to be safe, definitely cover them up for the interviews. And then once you kind of get in there, you can get a feel for the culture and, and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. That's a good point. Getting there and understanding better so that you yeah. kind of fit in. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, we'll move on from dress, if y'all are good. And um, so those nerves, because we think it's scary to go to networking events, um, I think it's really good for you to kind of visualize yourself at the event before you go and kind of think about what you plan to do. And visualize yourself happy and enjoying the function, okay? I think sometimes if you do that beforehand, it'll calm, your, it'll calm those scary nerves that you have. Um, if someone else is going, I think it's always a good thing to maybe coordinate with that person just to see them when you get there. I think that's a confidence builder. That also comes your nerves. But I don't want you to stay with that person the whole time. You have to agree to meet them, maybe meet them at the refreshment table, um, <coughs> grab some punch or whatever, and then you want to make sure that you take your plan and you work your plan or your goals for the event after you get there. And if they have seated tables there for a meal, don't sit with your friend. Make sure you sit at a separate table so it kind of forces you to, to network with your team. Absolutely. Because that's the reason that you're there is to build your network and make those connections. But I do think it's kind of a confidence builder if you know someone when you first go in. Um, I think it's always a positive thing to have something in your hand. So I think if they have punch or they have coke or they have water, you grab something to drink. Because that gives you something in your hand. And it's always easier if you've got something in your hand to, um, to be talking. The food, you know, we wanted to kind of, and you know, sometimes you have those cups, so you need to be careful with the cups, um, the little small cups like the one on the table, um, because you don't want to fill those too full, because those are things that you can spill and slosh, and you don't want that to happen. If you decide you want to eat at a networking event, I mean, I think that's fine, but you might want to eat a small amount, kind of first when you first get there, and then get rid of that plate. It's very hard to balance the cup and balance the plate, and that can be a distracting thing. So if you're going there, eat first, maybe eat kind of fast, and then just take your cup and do your circulating and talking to people with just something in your hand to drink rather than having something to eat. I mean, don't, don't, don't worry about not eating at all. You can have something. Some people don't like to eat. They want to eat before they go, and I think that's a good thing, too. You want to eat before you go. Just grab some punch or a cup when you get there. Because if you eat, you're going to have your drink in your left hand and your, in your plate in your right hand. If you want to shake someone's hand, you're not, you're not going to be able to do that with a fake plate in hand. So I would like to use like a certain lens that put eat first and put the plate down and have a drink in your hand, and that way your hand is able to network, which I can't. So you don't have to worry about spitting on anyone. <laughs> 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 or seeing people chew your food. That's <laughs> <laughs> I don't worry about what's in your teeth. Yeah, that, yes. Right. We, um, you know, we just want you to know on things we plan now, we think about that because we don't want you to have things in your teeth. But not every place thinks about that. So that's something you have to think about, too. Um, ladies, if you're going to a networking event, don't carry your big handbag. Um, it's not on my slide, but I think if you, you know, we have so many, so many of those crossbody bags that you can carry, small bags. Those are much better for you for networking than carrying a big handbag. You know, you don't want to have to worry about those things. Smile. You are so much more approachable if you have a smile on your face. If you catch someone's eye in the other, another part of the room and you have a smile on your face, you're just so much more approachable. And so make sure that that smile is there. You know, sometimes you have to think about that because if you're nervous, you have to scowl instead of a smile. <laughs> so you want to make sure you have a smile. Um, not 
everybody you try to engage in conversation will want to have a conversation with you, and so some will, some want, some won't, so what? <coughs> right? You're trying to do the right things. Don't feel rejection. Don't feel sad. Don't feel like, oh, they didn't want to talk to me. Some will, some won't, so what? Remember that. Because, you know, everybody has different people they have things in common with or they can connect with. But you don't connect with everyone. You know, it's the same thing with, you know, your friends or, or people that you meet, your colleagues that you work with. Some people you connect with, some you don't. So don't worry about that. Don't feel bad about that. Remember to focus on your event goals. What are my goals tonight? If that doesn't work out, then talking to this person and go on to someone else. Okay, approaching people to talk. This is, this is, kind of a, this is where um, you want to go in sort of with a plan and have your introduction ready. Remember your 30 second introduction, know that. Be comfortable with that, feel confident about that. Um, you may walk up to someone, like I might walk up to Raul sitting here on the front, and I might introduce myself to him and maybe shake his hand. And I might take that first line off of your conversation starter sheet and say, you know, I don't know many people here tonight, but I want to introduce myself and tell him my name. And I came tonight because, you know, I know everyone else here is management student, is in management, and I wanted to meet some more people that you know, are in management too, and that are maybe out there um, searching for the right job. I wanted to get to know some more of the people. You know, you might say that. I don't know what you're doing. Yes, you want to shake my hand? Yes. <laughs> but I mean, put your hand out and shake their hand. Um, so you want to have that ready. And one tip is to say their name out loud more than once. Like, that's me, just there, Lynn. I'm George. That's me, just there, Lynn. Kind of just say it more than once out loud, and that way they'll remember when you break the conversation to, to address a person correctly. You know, <laughs> You know, the, um, the more you can use a person's name, I mean, that's just, that makes that person happy, you know? They know my name, they're saying my name over and over again, you want to do that. Um, thank you, George, that's good. Um, approachable body language. What's approachable body language? Smiling. Yes. Well, that's big if you, especially since the world's gotten smaller, um, there's a good chance you're going to be dealing with someone from another country. Certain countries, have certain aspects of body language they find offensive. Okay. If you're in a Hindu country and you show the bottom of your feet to them, you might not even talk to them anymore. They're very offended. Uh, Japanese don't like big arm movements uh, or uh, eye, eye contact if they're of a higher order than you are. These are things you have to know before you get get, get there. So if you look like you're going to work over, overseas, get to know the policies of the area you're going to and the people before you do something and offend somebody that you didn't mean to. Thank you. That, those are good thoughts because I do know every culture has different things that are acceptable or more acceptable in their culture than, than in ours. And so it's good to know those. Those are very good. I also think like standing tall and having a little bit of confidence in your stand and your walk says a lot. You know, you're kind of clutched over in a corner. People are going on. But if you're kind of in the room, being interactive, you're confident, people portray that differently. And people want to talk to people that are confident. I mean, I think that that is something that makes people want to gravitate towards you if you're confident. Absolutely. And um, you don't, you know, I think that smile makes you approachable. Your arms being crossed would not make you approachable. So, you know, that's if you've got that, that, that cup of punch in your hand, you're in good shape because you can't do that. So think about that. But that smile and, and looking confident can be a very positive thing. And don't look down. You know, if you look down, that's sort of a negative, sad thing, and that kind of shows you're, you're scared. So make sure you are looking down at your feet. Also, I've learned if you make eye contact with someone, they'll be scared to make the first step. Right. Because uh, they may be uh, scared. So if you're not thinking, you may be able to build a relationship that will exist. If you're somebody, has got to make the first step. Absolutely. Sarah, I think another thing in our day and age that makes people look virtual is if you're over here doing this. That's a great. That's a great point. Um, yeah, you don't want to have your phone out and be staring at your phone. Um, that's not why you're there. I mean, that that will not help you make connections. 
the only time you probably get your phone out is if you make a connection and you want to go ahead and put them their information in or you want to go ahead and do that connection on LinkedIn, that that might be something that you would do. But that would be the only reason you have to If you have to take a call, no, you're fine. If you have to take a call, I would step out for a minute and take a call and come back. Because I think you want to look very approachable. And people probably don't want to walk up to you and talk if you're focused on your phone all the time. Um, talk slowly. Talking slowly calms you down. And it makes the person you're talking to feel more comfortable too. So know some conversation starters. So we provided you with a list tonight of conversation starters. And George, you were talking to me earlier about when you go to networking events, what usually happens. I I mean, what do they usually ask you? For for business and networking events, people usually ask me what I do. Yeah. That's that's a common common ask. What do you hi, what do you do? So I mean that's one of the first things you hear. You know, I think it's a very natural thing that you say, well, I'm going to school, but I also work. And so then the next question to you is going to be, well, what do you do? And they always want to know more about what you do. And so you want to ask them questions about what they do as well. But we gave you a long list. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but these would be things that you could talk about. And I think what you have to do is you have to think about, okay, make your little list in your head, or, um, you know, I don't even mind if you have a little tiny little notebook and you want to jot down some things just to remind yourself, um, to keep in your pocket or in that small bag that you've got with you. But, you know, think about some things that you can talk about. There's the list. I'm not going to go over everything on there. But that first one is about what you do. Usually that, that is the big one. Or if you're in school and you say, well, currently I'm a full-time student, they may say, what are you studying? You know, tell me about, um, you know, what are they teaching now in, in HR? What are, the, what are the trends? What's happening in HR? You know, you want to be ready to answer those questions. Or you maybe want to ask them if they tell you that they're studying in their full-time One more tip if I could. Yeah. When you, when you meet someone and you shake their hand, don't keep it open like this. When you're, when you're open like this, you're approachable. When you're closed off like this, you're not approachable. You're too close. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, when you're like this, when you're like this, people will, will gravitate to you yeah. and you'll open up your yeah. Come on in. We're, we're, we're taking guests. Come yeah. on in. Because so if you get too close, then it's like you're in the space. Exactly. Yeah. And, you're not, and you're not open as well. So it's just like, you're, Thank you. You're Sometimes we think about things we've done at other events, and so they just come up and we want to share them. Any questions about any questions about the things we were just talking about, the conversation starters? Are there anything on there that, that you're uncomfortable with? We just want you to have a list or something. So um, you had a takeaway from tonight. So the business parts. So like in the world today, business parts are still very important. And we even encourage you as students to have one. And what we've done is we've given you some information that you may want to include on the front of your card. And here's some information you may want to include on the back of it. You do have the option of not putting anything on the back of it, too. Um, that's really your choice. Sometimes the back of the card is where if you give it to someone, they make notes about you. So sometimes it's nice if the back doesn't have anything. But if you have a lot to share about yourself, then the back of the card is the place where you can put some of that information. But I think the most important thing is that you've got your name, your, your phone, your email, your, you know, what your major is, um, how, you know, if you have a LinkedIn profile, you want to put that on there. Those kinds of things are important. We gave you a sheet that has some samples, different kinds. I mean, some of them have the app and state on there, and some of them don't. Um, but we wanted to give you just some examples to show you the kinds of cards that you might want to have and how you might want to arrange it. And a couple of the ones, we actually changed the names, but these were cards, the ones that are Athens, where they included organizations that they belong to. And I think that, you know, that tells you maybe the employer that you're leaving the card with, how you're involved with that organization. And especially if you have a leadership role, that's a great way for you to highlight that business parts. I guess the other thing about um, business cards is that you make a connection with someone
someone and they give you the business card, what are we going to do with that information? They have a link, link in with them. They have an email, send them an email telling them how you enjoyed uh, mating it. These, these kind of fall under our follow-up, but I want to go ahead and mention it here because we just talked about the business card. If you exchange a business card and you really want to have a connection with that person, you want to do something with that business card. You want to connect with them in some way. And yeah, that could be on LinkedIn or that could be with an email. How fast do you want to do that? Yes, as soon as possible. Um, I would say within 24 hours you want to do that. But, but really, you don't want to just take that card and do nothing with it. Because that doesn't, that doesn't grow that relationship, that alliance you have with that person. Common networking mistakes. That. Yeah. Um, wow, value all contacts. Not treating everyone with respect. I mean, that is like huge. I mean, you may meet someone and it, you may not know right then how that person and you may connect and how you may, um, how they may be a, a good contact for you, but you want to treat everyone with respect. And if they offer you their card, you probably want to go ahead and take that card and make that connection. Um, real, real important. Um, but that's a common mistake people make. They discount someone and they don't treat them or give them respect or time that they should. Well, that unrealistic expectations, we've talked about that. So you probably you probably know that you want to, what you want to expect out of the event. You're going to set your goals. Attending the event and not engaging. I talked about that earlier. What is that? Just showing up. Just saying, okay, I'm going to go to this networking event. I'm supposed to be there. And you go there for five or ten minutes, but you don't do anything. You just show up. Um, you don't engage. You don't talk. You don't um, make a connection with anyone. That's just, that's just attending the event. If you go to a conference, you need to make sure that you don't just go to the conference. You connect with some people while you're there. Not having enough business cards, that's not a good thing either, right? Don't make that mistake. And then forgetting to follow up and stay accountable for anything that you promised. You know, sometimes you'll go to events um, and you'll say, oh yeah, let me send you that article about so-and-so or about this. That might be helpful. Maybe it's come up in conversation. And so then you go back and you never send that. And so you really haven't kept your word and you've not been accountable. And so that doesn't make you maybe the best connection for them. But if you promise something, you want to make sure you go back and you send that information immediately. I had someone tell me at a lunch that they were going to send me some information about an organization and what the fees were and all that. I mean, before I could get back to my office, it was there. And I mean, I was really impressed. I mean, it gave me a real positive feeling about that person. So, if you say you're going to do something, you need to do it. I don't have the exact stat, but a lot of people don't follow up. Following up is half the battle. If, if you do that, then you're, you're halfway home. So just be sure to follow up. Be it a, uh, a potential job or a business opportunity, just make sure you follow up. Although it seems obvious, a lot of people don't do it. If you do it, then you're, you're halfway there. So that, that's what we were just talking about. Send an email within 24 hours to a recruiter that you met at a career fair or someone that you made contact with at an event. 24 hours. And perhaps connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, that would be a great thing to do. And, you know, I think after you go to an event, make some notes. You know, <laughs> you know as time passes, you sometimes get kind of blurred about what happened and what did you accomplish and who did you meet. So make some notes after the event so that you can be sure that um, if you run into that person again, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, and you can go back and refer to your notes. Um, if there's a host for the event, thank the host. Also, if you're a connection of yours and your network has something for you, remember to thank them. You know, I don't think we say thank you enough. So thank the host of the event. But after you make connections, like let's say if a professor does something for you, um, maybe they write you a recommendation, Maybe they make a referral for you. Remember to thank them. I mean, that, that, that shows that you're very mature, that you're very, um, you know, you know etiquette, you do the right things. So remember to say thank you. And if you actually, if you write a handwritten thank you note, 
that goes a long way in today's technology society. You will be remembered if you write a handwritten note, I guarantee it. So I would, if you have stationery, do that at the same time. Probably it off the next day, the same day. So be sure you keep up with your networking supplies, keep them so you have plenty, you know, business cards, notepads, resumes, all those kinds of things. Um, yes, and at the career fairs, you definitely want to take your resume, right? Okay, we did talk about that earlier. Make sure you do that. Along, you could have a business card and your resumes, but take those to your career fair. Um, stay in contact, um, trade information. You know, just because you connect with someone, and maybe they become your LinkedIn connection, or, um, or maybe even an email connection. Make sure you stay in contact. Don't let a lot of time pass before you connect with them in some way. Maybe just send them a note and say, hi, how are things going? I know you were working on finishing your degree. Did you get finished? You know, something. Don't let a long time pass without, without staying in contact with them. Matt, yes. about LinkedIn, if you meet people and they ask to be your LinkedIn, are you, do you have to let all of these people be on? No. Only, I mean, I would only if you feel like you know them in some way. Um, or if you want to. If you don't want to, then you definitely don't want to do that. You know, it's easy to discard it. You can get more advice you can get. Yeah. That'll take care of that. <laughs> yeah. So these are things to do after you, at the end of the event. So I guess we're at a place where, I know we covered a lot of information. Um, questions? Yes? I have a question about the business cards and the resume. As far as the networking event, I know it comes in different you know, formats and events like a career fair or workshop or seminar, like the women's symposium. Right. Okay, so I think the business card is great because I think I'm going and I didn't have that prepared, so I might kind of do that now. When is the best time? As you just mentioned at the end of the event, is when is the best time to say hi? You know, it's nice to meet you. May I offer my um, resume and business card? We kind of connected in conversation. You know, when is the best time to do that? Well, I think if you're having a conversation with them mm -hmm. and you might not see them again at the right. event, then right. I would probably want to go ahead and give them the business card. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think I think I would before I left them I would want to say, you know, here's the business my business card. I just want to stay connected with you. Right. And um, you know, you might ask them if they have one. Because you don't know sometimes if you're going to circle around and see them again. Mm -hmm. And I guess at the symposium I don't know um, if It'll be an opportunity for resumes or not? It might be. But, but the business cards, I think, would be perfect. Yes, the business cards would be perfect. I think you have to think about the event and whether um, the event is right for resumes or not. And certainly, like, if we have employers at a reception that we're doing and it's employers and students and they want to get to know you, then I would say bring your business cards and maybe bring some of your resumes. And a career fair, definitely. But, but like this podium, I don't know. I mean, if you, just, if you had a bag that was big enough and they could just be in there, you might have them, but probably the business card would be the more appropriate thing. Usually at business functions, you see business cards more than with resumes. Yeah. Here's something. This is new. I don't know if anybody has seen them. These are these rubber things you can put in the back of your phones. Mm -hmm. The business card holder. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm an artist. And I have my art. I'm always meeting people. And I always, I always carry my phone with me. You may not have my, my business card. But I put it on the back of my phone, so I always have my card. That's Please a wonderful thing. That is one of those latest and greatest promotional <laughs> items, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah they're wonderful. Um, but that's a good idea. Thank you for sharing that. Those are a great idea. Other questions? Yes. Well, I was just playing on how many people should you have physical area fail or the national area fail is the students attend. How many business cards or resumes should well, I think sometimes that depends on, you know, what, how many people you want to engage with while you're there. So, I mean, if there are like 10 different companies or 10 different employers, then you might use that as a way to determine how many resumes to have. But I think when you talk about business cards, I think you usually order business cards in terms, you know, usually in hundreds, like 100 or 200 or something like that. Um, you know, you might think in terms of, you know, how many am I going to use before I become employed wherever I want to be employed? Because then you might not need the business card as a student. Um, but 
but but I would think you know at least. I hope you meet that many people and network with that many people, right? <laughs> but I think resumes depends on how many people you want to engage with that as a career fair. As far as I was concerned, because you said you have to respect everybody, you know you meet a lot of employers, and so if I'm hundred hundred uh, a resume to list the eight and there is three that I approve, she also expects to get some few extras. Yeah, yes. few extras. Yeah, but if you don't have your resume, you can always give them a card mm -hmm. and um, tell them you'll follow up with that resume. You can do that too. Your LinkedIn profile, you can put as much information or as little as you want. So it, it depends on how vulnerable you want to be. Unfortunately, with when you own a business, you have to put everything out there. So I get some LinkedIn phone calls trying to get me to start a new business with them. And you have to become... Um, able to tell others no. Not only do you hear no, but you also have to tell others no. I'm like, I'm not interested. I have more than I can do right now. But thank you. You know, be courteous, but uh, cut it off when you're you're not interested. Don't waste people's time. But you can decide what you want out there. It's The internet is up to you. But once you put it out there, you can't take it back. Just remember that. Thank you. That's very good. Any other questions? If you had business cards for um, your current employer, would those be appropriate? If you went to like a career fair, or would you want to get some different ones? That, yeah. <laughs> I probably want a different one. I probably would want a different one. I might want a different one. Okay. But that's a good question. I'm sorry. We weren't laughing at you. It was sort of like the situation we were laughing at. Okay. Anyone else? Does the school help us get business cards if you want to? Yes. You would go to the printing office. Um, you can certainly come to us and we can try to help you, but the printing office downstairs and the people that will do it, um, they will charge you a small fee, but a small fee. But we can help you with that. We like those too. There are some, I'm glad you said that, there are some sheets out there that um, have a red dot on them. If you have a red dot, then um, we will help you get your business cards, and we will pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's at least three of them in here, and if you have a red dot, um, if you'll come by our office, we'll help you um, with the printing office to get your business cards. We'll take care of Okay. Um, any other questions? Well, we are available if you have any questions um, at the Career Development Center after tonight, and um, I hope that you'll take away a few nuggets of information from tonight. A presentation that will help you be a successful networker and also help you build your network and understand if you take away anything that it's a two-way street and those connections you make today take care of them because they can be with you for a long long time it's our pleasure to be with you thank you for coming thank you